Hey everyone, and welcome to today's live workshop where we're gonna be making hidden pressure plate foot switches. So that way you can trigger props, lights, or better yet, set up booby traps. So that way you know when there's trespassers into your restricted area. I have a couple prop volunteers, victims, as well as a motor. So hopefully I cover just about every way that you might be wanting to hook up your hidden pressure plate foot switch to your prop. And all a pressure plate foot switch is, it consists of three pieces. You have a top plate, a bottom plate, and an insert in between that keeps these plates separate until somebody steps on the plate, the plates touch, and the thing you want activated, activates. And then when the person takes their foot off of it, it disengages, it untouches. If you want to enjoy just like a fun Halloween night, cardboard is a great cheap option. It'll get you through the night and then you can toss them when you're done. Let's just cut this down. We don't need a huge foot switch for this demo. Most of you all been here with me. We know we don't do much measuring. Sometimes we're rewarded for just taking the leap. Other times we're not. And uh, we got to take our two steps back to take our one step forward. So let's just make like a six by six, I say. These pressure plates are not just for scares. You can use them for your art exhibit or perhaps you're making an interactive science exhibit. Just kind of adds an element of surprise. All right, so guys, we have our top and our bottom plates. While cardboard touching isn't gonna do much of anything, you know, we need some kind of conductive surface over here. And there are a couple options. The two main ones that I use is aluminum foil or copper tape. Copper tape is a little bit more expensive, but it has the advantage in that it is self-adhesive, meaning it comes in ribbons that you can just then take and put a couple ribbons or you can cover the whole thing. It really depends on the size of your foot switch. You only need like a strip in the middle and a strip in the middle to come into contact. You don't need the entire plate to come into contact. So copper strips are great. They're also much easier to solder wire to. Although if you don't want to solder, this project is totally doable without soldering. If you are making a larger foot switch, if someone were to step on this and this is really big, well, you have a, a big hollow middle. And so it'll start to crease over time. And what happens is your two middles will stay touching. And this is gonna cause your prop to activate and look like it's like possessed. So cardboard, again, great for a night of fun, but definitely not durable for a full season of attractions or exhibits or escape rooms. My go-to is always the quarter inch plywood because it's super cheap. You can buy them in large sheets and then cut them down to size, make your custom shapes. And you can see that it's flexible enough. So if somebody steps on it, it's going to flex. But as soon as you take your foot off, it's rigid enough that it's going to bounce back into place. This is the dollar store material. Now I do not recommend the dollar store material. We're just doing this for our demo because the alum the alu aluminum is rather thin. It tears really super easy. So I have this multimeter and I'm gonna set it. Oh, it's already set on continuity mode. I'm going to attach one piece of aluminum to each probe. And we're going to see if aluminum is going to be a good conductor of our electricity. So you listen up for the beep. Yes, so theoretically, we can cover our sides with aluminum and it's going to conduct electricity. So the best way to do this, not using the dollar store aluminum, is to use some adhesive. So that way your aluminum sits as flat as possible. If it's all kind of like bunched up in the middle, well, the other side of the aluminum is going to like have a propensity to want to touch each other. So no touching unless somebody steps on it. I am trying to tear off a piece of aluminum ever so carefully and it's already ripping. No one is more of a uh, proponent of dollar store stuff than I am except for the aluminum. Tear so easily. So normally when gluing this on, I spray glue this, let it sit for a little bit, and then I start by bending it like this and putting it in the middle, creasing. And then 
you can either use a ruler or you can use a like paint spreader and then just start to work your way out like this. That way you get your aluminum as flat as possible. We're gonna really see if we can flatten this down without the use of glue. Let's see if we can get away with this. We have one relatively flat conductive surface right here. And then if this were glued on, you can go ahead and trim all the excess. I give this foil one star. So now we have two conductive surfaces that can touch and untouch to make or break the connection. We need to create some kind of insert situation that keeps these two separate. Most of the time that I do this is I create a frame, a little border around the foot switch. So that way, if you step in the middle of it, it'll flex down and touch, but the border is enough to keep them separate. If you have a rather large foot switch, you might find that in addition to the border, you might have to put a couple more support pieces. Now for your insert, you can use a variety of different materials. Cardboard is great. I also use the same quarter inch plywood. You can use foam strips. You can use rubber strips as well. They come in a roll and you can get them in all variety of different thicknesses. Another idea is to use compression springs. You can mount springs on each of the corner. And when a person steps, the springs compress and then they pop back open again. Now, the only thing with compression springs is remember, if you put them in the corners, remove the foil or conductive surface from the corners. Otherwise, if it's a metal spring, it's going to keep these permanently connected. So now what I'm going to attempt to do is punch out the middle. I'm not going super nuts in terms of getting it perfect because it's just a separator. We have a place in the middle where the person can step. Let's make sure this thing works before we go any further with the wiring. So what I'm gonna do is put one of the probes like this, then I'm going to sandwich him so he's isolated from the top part. And I'm actually inserting this guy like this and then like this. We're getting beepage and we're not getting beepage when it's not being touched. So we know we're not getting accidental contact. I'm actually quite surprised given how bubbly this is. We're gonna wire each plate. So I'm gonna remove the insert. Obviously looking at this, you can already tell, like this is not the best, you know, most secure way of wiring this. But if you're just doing this for some Halloween fun, it's gonna last a night or a fun exhibit, then this system will work just fine. All I'm gonna do very simply is attach this guy over here. With a ridiculously large piece of tape <laughs> and attach this guy over here. And then what we wanna do is sandwich these guys together. And to make life a little bit easier, so they don't keep coming apart, we'll just tape this together like that. And I'll do one end in case we need to open it up and fix anything. For the wiring, you don't really want to think of this as a positive wire and a negative wire. They're either going to be both positive or both negative because the idea is that we are going to interrupt power to our prop using either the positive wire or the negative wire of your power situation. Let's start with the simplest scenario. And this is a little owl. And um, those of you know that if the prop is sitting here ready to be demoed on, it's got some kind of um, special characteristic. That's fancy for it's on its way out. So it makes perfect victims. I mean, volunteers for this. So we have our ever famous try me button. And let's see how this thing's supposed to work. One of its eyes is like jacked up. See, one is working, but the other one is not. Probably the easiest way to wire this to your prop 
is through the try me button. I love doing try me button hacks because you don't have to open up your prop. You don't have to hack into any of the electronics. It's super easy. Your try me button is always going to be made up of two wires. Don't think of it as positive or negative. Uh, it's basically either both negative or both positive. And all you're going to do is option one, cut the button off. And so now you have two separate wires and you wire each one to each wire like that, you know, and this is gone. Number two is oftentimes I love these try me buttons. I have a drawer full of them. Do not throw away your try me buttons. So instead pull it out. This base is super easy to remove. You can see that it's just screws. It'll allow me to pop this base off and give me a little more room to solder directly to those. Now, again, I promise you a solder free installation option. Pick up a couple DuPont style jumper wires. Jumper wires come in all kinds of configuration. Male, male, female, female. Here you see that I have a female male. I mean, I could use a female, female, but all that's important is one end is female. I'm going to try and stick it on one of the pins and I'm going to just kind of cheat and go like this so I can see what I'm doing. It's pretty secure. You know, especially if this is a prop that's going to sit static, it's not going to be like on a moving cart or anything where this could get snagged. I'm going to try and get the second one in, which is right next to them. I have either the sensor or the off. Some of you will have on and try me. It's whatever option you want to flip the switch where this try me engages. So for me, it's off. I have one of these quick connectors and I'm just going to stick one end here. And again, it's not positive or negative. This is positive. We'll call it positive. And each of them like this. And I'm just tugging, making sure everything is secure enough, you know, for our test purposes. Let's see what happens. Dum, dum, dum. So he's going to go through his sequence. Probably put him right side up, right? So that way he doesn't have to exorcist around to like talk to us. But say for whatever reason, you don't have a try me, you need to go through the inside of the prop. This is a battery operated prop and we converted it to use an AC DC wall adapter here. Let's say that is my only option to power this thing. And we need to somehow hook up my foot switch. So how do we do this? Number one is my least favorite option. And those of you that have been with me a long time kind of know that Whenever possible, I try and not hack into power adapters. Inside this are two wires, a positive and a negative. I try and like go in with a craft knife real carefully. Doesn't always work, you know, doesn't always work. But I slit down trying to remove the insulation and revealing both wires. That way I can cut only one of the wires, you know, positive or negative, doesn't matter, and hook the switch to that one wire, and then there you have it. And of course you can make these wires as long as you need to in order to run your foot switch to the location you need it to, to sit in. I'm not a huge fan of hacking up power adapters because once the season is over, well, now you're stuck with something where you got a like electrical tape together, you got a wire nut together. I like to keep this intact so I can use it for other things. Option number two is to actually go into your prop, which is something we did with this prop. This was adhesived on or glued on, <laughs> adhesived on. It got a little mangled. I had to use a heat gun to just soften the glue enough to be able to pry this with a flathead screwdriver. Here's our battery pack. If yours is wall powered, you're not gonna have a battery pack. The two wires that you see are kind of unlike the others. They're a little bit fatter is this white one and this green one. I know so well color coded, not. So the green one is our power wire. These are spare wires that I had that I just been trying to get rid of. So green for go, go power, go. And the white one is going to be our ground. Now, if you open your prop, most likely it's not going to be a screw adapter. It's going to be one of these with a pigtail coming out of it. Two wires, pick one. 
doesn't matter which one it is. So here is our green wire here. So what you're going to want to do is cut it. We have interrupted power to it and we're going to put in this switch. Switches are always connected in line with either the positive or the negative. All right, so you can see my connections there. The positive wire goes to each wire of the switch and on. Oh, he's right. This place is haunted. This prop is like, oh no, is it really haunted? I'm stuck in a cage. I can't run away. What you can do is drill another hole hidden somewhere where the wires for your foot switch can come out and then you can properly hide your foot switch. I know a lot of you guys have started motorizing your props. So how do you hook up a foot switch to the motor portion of your prop so it moves when somebody steps on a foot switch? He lives to uh, haunt another day. We'll see if you guys see him back the next stream. If he's gone, well, then you know what happened. You know, dust to dust, just like he said. Temporarily, I'm going to use jumper wires uh, because it'll allow us to do this in a way without having to really cut into anything. And of course, jumper wires, not great for long-term use, high-powered use with our motor, but we're only gonna run it for a short period of time. This is going to plug in to a much beefier adapter via like so. So that way I don't have to cut it because you guys all know how I feel about cutting power, power situations. So for this, we and always work unhooked, you know, until you have all your connections. So I'm going to take the ground and I'm going to go ahead and connect them to ground. The power, well, we want to interrupt the power and I can either pick the green wire for low speed or the yellow wire for high speed. Get this guy in here. Normally, you know, we connect it here and these two would be connected. We're going to break this speed wire right here. So I'm just going to take this wire and kind of temporarily wrap him. Let's see how this works. If you have alligator clips, that's great too. Kind of makes this a little bit easier, but to keep it all in frame, I'm going to do it this way. Cause then you have like all this alligator clip wire all over the place, kind of tough to see. The low speed control wire comes here, attaches to one plate and the power attaches to the other plate. So basically we're just kind of like breaking the connection, putting the plate in between. I wouldn't use aluminum foil for high powered applications. We're gonna run this um, very short term, you know, and then everything like sets on fire and stuff. Famous last words, am I right? Let's plug this in. And as it should, nothing is happening. And if I step on it, there we go. We have our motor prop working. So for your battery operated props, Tin foil, just fine. For motors, on the one hand, yes, you are only momentarily stepping on the motor. So running that amount of current and depending on the load that this motor is turning. Typically, a power supply for a motor like this, 12 volt, 5 amp, but if you're really moving a heavy load, you might do like an 8 amp. Like I always like to go heavier on the amps, within reason, of course. For foil with continuous use, maybe this is a long-term exhibit or attraction, I would probably opt for either copper or aluminum or steel plates, something much more sturdy, much more safely uh, conduct more current through. But for short-term uh, experimentation, definitely I always encourage people to prototype first, you know, kind of work out all the bugs, figure out how everything is connected before moving on to the real thing, right? So that way we can all conserve material and keep everything frugal says Dollar Store Rachel, except for the aluminum foil. I try to give you kind of different scenarios. If there is a totally different scenario that I did not cover, definitely post it in the comments. And heck, we'll fire up another one of these and pick another Victoria.
the, uh, the volunteer to help us out. This is shot live for community members. If you want to join our community, definitely hit the link. We also do a live Zoom where we build from start to finish animatronics, robot projects. Join up. I'd love to see what you guys are working on. But these are shot live. So inevitably, there's no script. There is no oops or reshoots or anything like that. So there's always stuff that I'm like, oh, I can't believe I forgot to talk about that. Definitely hit the full tutorial link below because that's where I include all the stuff that I forgot to say or correct my own self when I listen to myself and I'm like, I don't even understand what's coming out of my mouth. How do I expect you guys to? Have a great rest of the night, guys, and I will see you later. Bye.